The UK, surprisingly, has been one of the leading countries in reducing salt. And the reason for that was that the, um, after a specialist report into what we should be doing to try and prevent people dying from strokes and heart attacks and what we should be doing about food that we eat, one of the recommendations, and this was in 1994, was that we should reduce salt intake. Um, and that report would have, like all these other reports, would have gathered dust in a Department of Health library. Uh, nothing would have been done. But fortunately for us, the food industry decided to fight the salt recommendations and started a big campaign in the media about nanny state and why should the government be interfering with salt and what were they going to do. They wouldn't have done anything anyway. And in the end, the food industry got so worked up that several companies threatened to withdraw funding from the Conservative Party when John Major was Prime Minister and there was an election due in a short time. And of course funding to the parties is very important to fight the elections. And according to the British Medical Journal editorial in 1996, the Prime Minister's office ordered the Department of Health to rescind the specific sort recommendations. And the Chief Medical Officer did this at a press conference where his officials knew nothing about it. This caused such a furore, and in particular, all of the experts who were on the committee recommending to the government that we should reduce salt intake, amongst many other recommendations, were so incensed that we decided to set up an action group to reverse this decision. And we set up our own charity, NGO, to do this, CASH, which stood for Consensus Action on Salt and Health. And the idea was to work collaboratively with the food industry to get the huge amounts of salt they put into food to get them to start reducing. And after an initial start, we had no idea what to do. We were quite successful in getting media publicity, and we persuaded several leading supermarkets to start reducing the amount of salt they were adding in their own label products, in particular Asda and the Co-op. Fortunately for us, the government changed, and there was a change in policy with the chief medical officer endorsing the salt recommendations. And at that time, the Food Standards Agency was being set up and we were very fortunate to be able to ensure that the Food Standards Agency took on nutrition as one of the things they're going to do, and in particular, take on salt reduction. And they have done a remarkable job up to the time that they were allowed to do this, when Andrew Langsley then removed responsibility from nutrition uh, from the FSA to uh, the Department of Health in 2010. And the way that we planned with the FSA to reduce salt was interesting and a novel concept which hadn't been tried before, and that's what we call incremental salt reduction. That is, we set targets for more than 86 categories of food. That's all the sort of foods you buy in the supermarket uh, which have had salt added. So bread, bread products, cheese, meat products, ready-prepared meals, cereals, and so on, which are the major sources of our salt intake, all had targets set, which they had to achieve within four years. And those targets were quite simple. It would be 10-15% reduction, which sounds very small. But then after two years of the salt reduction, we then meet again with the companies, discuss how they were getting on, see if there were any problems, and then set a target for two years ahead of the previous target, which would represent another 10 to 15% reduction. And then you go on doing that every four years, and after 10 years, you've got quite substantial reductions in the amount of salt the food industry has been adding. The consumer doesn't notice because it's been reduced slowly. There are very few technical problems because most of the salt in these products is there for flavor, not for other reasons, whatever the food industry may pretend. And if it's done slowly, people don't notice. And most of the products in the supermarket now have been reduced between 20 and 40 percent without people being aware. And salt intake has fallen, and we've measured that, or the FSA measured it very accurately in random samples of the adult population uh, using 24 hour urine collections, which are an accurate way of measuring salt intake if done properly, and shown there's been a 15 percent reduction in salt intake of just under, just over 1.4 grams a day by 2011. And we know from all the studies that have been done with salt and the effect on blood pressure 
this would save almost 18,000 people suffering uh, from strokes and heart attacks, 9,000 of which would be fatal. So you can see how a very simple policy of getting the food industry voluntary to reduce salt has a huge effect on actually a number of people dying and suffering from strokes and heart attacks. And indeed, the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, NICE, calculated already saved 1.5 billion pounds in healthcare saving costs. This very simple manoeuvre. Of course, we want to go on doing this, but we were stymied by Andrew Langsley taking nutrition away from the, the food standards agency. It's one of the biggest tragedies in public health that's occurred in England because the whole programme was stopped and he reorganised it in a much less robust way. Targets were not set for future years. The targets that had been set by the FSA were not achieved because there wasn't the same focus on these companies. We now have targets for 2017, which do represent an advance, but they're not really being stuck to by the food industry. And we need to go back to having an independent agency for nutrition, which is free of government control and free of industry, food industry, pressure on politicians and particularly funding of political parties, which is how this whole scandal was originally revealed. We must get an independent agency for nutrition and continue the salt reduction. On a worldwide scale, we've been very successful in persuading other countries, given the example of the salt reduction we set up with the FSA, as to how to do it in other developed countries. And many of them have now adopted the same plan as we developed in the UK. And I'm very pleased to see that they are now reducing salt intake in their own countries. And hopefully they may even overtake the UK, which because of the coalition government has slowed down this very brilliant initiative. And indeed the WHO reckons it's one of the most cost effective measures to reduce non-communicable disease and to reduce eye strokes, heart attacks and heart failure.